I'm Jim Leas from ITS Emerging Technologies, and today I'm talking to Mairead Martin, who's sort of one of the newer members of our ITS family here. She's the new Senior Director of uh, Digital Library Technologies. And uh, Mairead, the first question I have to ask you is, what's a digital library? Well, can I say it's nice to be here? <laughs> <laughs> you can. The weather is so much better than Wisconsin. Yes, it is, so. yes. And um, so I want to preface my remarks by saying that I have only been here a short while and been working in libraries in IT now for probably four or five months. I used to work around libraries uh, much more so around the year 2000, so it's very interesting to see what's happened since, you know, in the break. I, I, I took a, uh, not necessarily a career break, but I was working in identity management for a while and not so much to do with libraries. Um, so my comments today are not those of the very wise or insightful, but I do, I mean, my observations after a few months really is what I can share. Okay. Well, tell us about sort of, so this is a teaching and learning conference. So what's the role of the digital library for teaching and learning? That is a good question. Um, I, I think one thing that's clear uh, is that there aren't any, basically, there aren't any walls between a lot of technologies right now. You know, I think there was a time where we all hoped, well, I'll specialize in digital libraries and I'll specialize in instructional technologies and that'll be my specialty. But now you've got to know about everything and everything has something to do with everything else. Um, so in the context of, of a library and you know, management of information and preservation and stewardship of information, all of these new technologies are very, very interesting. Um, well, you know, we're getting all this new content. Where are we going to, just from a bread and butter or pedantic point of view, where are we going to store it? Uh, how are we going to manage it? How is it going to be accessed in the future? How is it going to link to ex other content? Um, I haven't heard much discussion about you know, all of this, the Web 2.0 technologies and all of the, the new content and very exciting content that, uh, and you know, very, very valuable content in some cases. Well, well, in some cases, this is very... <laughs> in some cases. In most cases. Uh, where, where is that going to live in the long term and how is it going to connect to existing collections um, and what about authority, et cetera. So there are a lot of, of really interesting questions there. But I think what's happening is that you can longer say, where I started my point was, you know, can longer say, I'm a librarian and I work on librarian technologies. You have to know about all technologies in both fields. Okay. Well, well the Web 2.0 stuff was kind of a lead into my next question, so that, that's great. Um, when I was uh, a student, a young, fella. A, a young fella, many years ago, um, I used to go to the library, walk into the library, go to the library catalog, look up the periodicals or books that I needed, go up in the stacks and find them. Um, now I think our, our students' first uh, maybe reference is Wikipedia. What, what do you think about the influence of sort of like the Wikipedia, Wikimedia, Wikisource uh, type projects in, in how they change maybe not just scholarship but also learning? Um, there's a lot of discussion in the library world now about basically whether libraries with Google and Wikipedia, where does that fit in to research? Um, I was at a very interesting uh, workshop recently run by the Research Libraries Group and OCLC about discovery, basically the discovery of resources. And it, I think that it's pretty much that we're seeing is that it's not going to be one or the other. You'll have people who go to Wikipedia and that might be the start of their discovery process, um, or it's easy reference. Uh, but then you may have people who, who want more and will go to the reference librarian or they'll go to the catalog, um, and they're looking for more authoritative sources. Uh, one thing that I know librarians are very sensitive about is that students and, and, and users get more of a, an awareness about the authority and value of information, and when is Wikipedia suitable, when is it not? When do you need something more? Um, so basically, it's, I've heard a, an interesting metaphor. It's like you don't want to be eating McDonald's every day, but there's room for McDonald's. It's fast, it's there, it's drive-through. Um, but it, it should, it's, I think there's, there's a tendency to say it's going to replace libraries, but I think it's just going to be in the spectrum, the continuum of information, like the continuum of dining from McDonald's to fine dining. Okay. Great. That's, um, that's not an original metaphor, though. I'm just, I borrowed that. Okay. The, I guess the next thing that I wanted to ask you, you mentioned Google. Um, 
Google has some projects that I think um, sort of maybe either mash up or collide with um, traditional library technology, right. pr traditional Google uh, or uh, digital library technologies. Um, Google Scholar, I can search for a book and sometimes I can, right. or an article, I can get the article or, or search inside the book. What, what, what do you think the effect of that type, the Google Scholar? I think that that's a, a really compelling model. Um, obviously it's very similar to the Amazon model that a lot of people are using now, not just for, for purchasing, but for browsing and finding other things that they like. Um, the challenge for librarians is really to be where the student is. The students online looking at Amazon, looking at Google Scholar, Wikipedia, the challenge is to, to be there and help the student find the resources that they're looking for. So Google Scholar, I think, uh, is another, is really a value add with the links into the catalog. It's saying we have that here um, as much as saying, or you can go to Amazon and buy it, or you can go to our press and buy it, or you can go to our bookstore and buy it, uh, or it's here in this library, or we can get it from another library. Um, it basically just makes the whole process richer, I think. It, it aids the findability. I mean, I was amazed um, a couple months ago when I was, well, I was updating my Vita, actually, and I used Google Scholar to do a search on me, and, and we have a service here, Get It, mm -hmm. at, at Penn State, and that's tied into Google Scholar, and I was able to not only look up the, the citations, but actually get the articles because we, we as a library subscribe to those, those journals. But you never did write articles, did I, you? I, uh, many year, again, many years ago in my academic career, I did. Um, finally, um, there, there's uh, maybe a more nefarious type uh, approach by Google, which is actually scanning mm -hmm. uh, books in um, traditional academics are saying this is running roughshod over intellectual property. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, can you look at that both ways? Are there benefits of that? Are right. there what are the things that take away from that? Um, yeah, it, it obviously brings up a lot of, of intellectual property and, and copyright issues. Um, of, and the first wave of, of Google was was towards works already in the public domain, which of course would be the easiest thing to do. Um, what was your question again? <laughs> <laughs> Is, what do you think, um, are, what are the benefits and what are the, the, the problems with uh, the Google scanning well, well, project? The, the benefits, um, basically, the library world, like most of higher ed, is very co it does things collectively. So the benefits of having some mass digitization by Google means that we can share our resources much more efficiently. And they, the downside, of course, is, well, um, what about access to those resources in the future if there, if there are copyright issues or if Google doesn't necessarily provide all of the access that you need, where are you going to be? Okay. That's and not a very good answer. That, but it's an evolving answer. <laughs> and certainly this, this uh, topic will evolve as this project progresses. Right. Um, any final thoughts about the Teaching and Learning Symposium? This is no doubt your first one. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think so far? Um, I think it, I've been to a couple of sessions this morning in the keynote of course and um, very interesting, uh, very stimulating, a lot of things to think about. Um, I'm thinking about of course some day-to-day -day things to do with how are we going to support all of this new technology. It's not like the old stuff is going away but this is going to add to the portfolio of things that we have to support, uh, what resources is it going to take, um, and then over the long term, how do we store and preserve and, and provide access to the information that it's, or the content that it's generating and creating. Um, so I, I think there are a lot of, of interesting questions. Okay. Maraid Martin, thank you. Maraid Martin is the ITS Senior Director of Digital Library Technologies. Thanks for being here today.